which is an objection. Uh, and I give the floor to uh, Grace. Good morning and thank you, Chair. Um, Neonicotinoid pesticide that is already banned in the EU uh, for use on crops. Just three weeks ago, the Court of Justice of the EU upheld this ban. Yet today, we are discussing whether this same chemical should be used in our aquatic environment. The establishment of a maximum residue level, MRL, for um, in, uh, in salmon, as proposed by the Commission, will effectively clear the way for the use of this highly toxic nicotinoid in EU fish farming. So I'm objecting to this for two main reasons. First, on the green aquatic and second, because of the potential health threat it poses. First, on protecting the aquatic environment. Using chloprid in salmon farming will only worsen the health of our rivers and oceans, which we know are already suffering from high levels of pollution and other pressures as we find ourselves in a climate and biodiversity emergency. There is ample evidence that the use of imidacloprid has a devastating impact on rivers and waterways, affecting crustaceans, insect species, soil organisms and bird populations. Harmonised classification and labelling approved by the European Union categorises imidacloprid as a very toxic to aquatic life with long effects. And experts warn that concentrations of less than one part per billion is enough to harm aquatic life. So even tiny traces would have impacts on aquatic and marine life. We have already seen this in practice. The use of imidacloprid in Japan has led to a dramatic collapse of fish stocks which have not recovered. As for soils, there is an increasing concern about the, res uh, the residence and accumulation of pesticide residues in soils and their pot potential to lead to soil acidification in aquatic systems. As a parliament, we recently adopted a soil resolution which stresses that healthy soils are essential to achieve the objectives of the European Green Deal, such as climate neutrality, biodiversity restoration, zero pollution ambition for toxic-free environment, and sustainable food systems and a resilient environment. This includes the aquatic environment. Approving the use of a dangerous pesticide actively flies in the face of uh, ensuring healthy soils, contradicting a resolution that received approval from all major political parties in this House. As well as concerns for the aquatic and marine environment, I also have serious concerns about the effect of imidacloprid on animal health, including human health. Scientific studies suggest that bioaccumulation of imidacloprid um, may occur in humans, given that this was demonstrated in animal studies, adversely affecting the heart, kidneys, thyroid, and uh, the brain. I believe that the aim of the risk assessment and the risk management recommend, uh, recommendations, which is to ensure a high level of human health protection, is not met in the case of imidacloprid. Finally, Chair, this objection highlights a major inconsistency with the new transparency regulation in that it does not cover foodstuffs of animal origin when the pesticide residue is a veterinary medicine assessed by the European Medicines Agency, the EMA. EU citizens have the right to know what chemicals are used in the foods they eat. The full effect of the transparency regulation should apply to maximum residue levels, MRLs, established by EMA when foods, foodstuffs are concerned in the same way that it applies to Food Safety Authority, EFSA. This is simply a matter of consistency. So in light of all that I have said, I call on the Commission to repeat the implementing regulation and submit a new draft to the Committee and include imidacloprid in the list set out in Annex 4 for which no maximum levels can be fixed for aquatic use. I also call on the Commission to ensure consistency with the transparency regulation where the risk assessment is undertaken by agencies other than EFSA, the Food Safety Authority. 
I hope colleagues will support this objection for the sake of ocean health, aquatic health and biodiversity. And I hope, Chair, that you and all your colleagues can agree. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so we move to the, the shadows. Uh, we have uh, Judas Mazilis for EPP. Thank you, Chair. I'm not intended uh, to support the objection. Imidacloprid as the veterinary medical product, if it will get marketing authorization, will be used to treat fish suffering from parasitic infections with C. Uh, lice, uh, uh, this active substance will not be used to food producing animals until a granted marketing authorization. The European uh, Medicines Agency has recommended, based on the opinion of the Committee for Medicinal Products for Veterinary Use, the establishment of uh, maximum residue limit for imidacloprid in Salmonida and the extrapolation of the MRL to all uh, thin fish. During the assessment of an application for a marketing authorization, the CVMP and the Commission would examine the safety of the product for human health, animal health and the environment. Thank you. Thank you. For Renew, Nicolas Stefanota. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Um, Thank you, Chairman. This was a pesticide that was banned for outside of uh, the EU. Uh, was used on Atlantic salmon for the control of sea lice. In the current objection, we uh, have a responsibility to our citizens to protect the health and the environment. Uh, it, it might not be used to use a n wise to use a neurotoxin in salmon farming with such risks and unknowns. We should follow the precautionary. To look to the past and choose imidacloprid when there are other chemicals used for disinfecting fish that have a less harming potential to the environment. We are facing an ecological crisis, not just a climate crisis, so we should look and protect our environment and biodiversity from harmful substances. Do we afford to risk going forward with a substance when there are so many harmful risks? So I tend to support uh, large, uh, in large part the, the opinion presented by the rapporteur. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have now one SND speaker, uh, Sarah Serdas. Sarah, floor is yours. Thank you, Pascal. I'm taking the floor on behalf of Crystal, Shadow Rapporteur, for this objection. The SD group fully supports the objection presented by the Greens, and we do this because of the well documented negative effects of this substance and because of the potential for negative effects to the water environment where this substance is used. This substance is already banned for use usage in plant farming and should not be allowed in fish farming and we also believe that as there are other alternatives to use these substances the industry can use these other alternatives less polluted uh, substances instead thank you very much thank you uh, we move to the to id aurelia Beigneux. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Chairman. Once again, the European Parliament is called on to uh, slow down the uh, Commission's order re to uh, regulate uh, pesticides that are dangerous for humans. This is used to destroy parasites in salmon uh, farming, and the European Chemicals Agency considered that this product, and I quote, was dangerous for the environment and very toxic for aquatic life. But uh, obviously the Commission continu prefers to conf continue following Bayer Monsanto's 
uh, opinion, we need to protect uh, the uh, aquatic species. Uh, there are uh, other species that feed on the parasites uh, or we use other methods such as hydrogen peroxide. We need to f promote these products and support producers uh, in their approach. Uh, once again, we see that the European Commission uh, is showing no respect for the legitimate position of the member states nor or the decisions of the Court of Justice of the European Union or the specialized agency. Uh, as long as no uh, study uh, proves the effectiveness, the, the Parliament uh, has pr uh, applied the uh, precautionary principle and continues to support this. Thank you, Michel Rivasi for the Greens. Merci. Thank you, Pascal. Well, uh, listen here, this is a, a dual game going on. We got imidacloprid out of the pesticides used in farming in 2018, and now uh, it's been brought in by the back door by using biocide regulations. Now, as my colleagues have said, uh, uh, this is a neurotoxin, it has reproductive effects, it's an endocrine disruptor, and whether it's EFSA or the uh, MA, it shows that there are significant impact on the aquatic life. Now, using it as a biocide on salmon, and we know that if it's used in salmon farming, then we know we're going to find it in the environment uh, uh, with respect to all of biodiversity. But what's surprising that we're a is that we're asked to vote on this uh, while the comp comprehensive studies and scientific uh, opinion will not be given to us until after the uh, application of the regulation. So once again, the Commission is not respecting regulation on transparency of 2019. In addition, when we look at the uh, controls of who's uh, uh, farming the salmon, it's uh, Norway, Chile, UK and Canada. They're not EU members, so we won't uh, be able to control this. So I really ask all colleagues, we need to amend this uh, uh, application uh, regulation and this substance needs to be put in Annex 4, as the reporter has said, and there, there is no maximum amount set for uh, aquatic use. Uh, we move to ICIA, Alexander Vendra. Uh, thank you, Pascal. So before I will go to purchase my salmon for the lunch, I, uh, we, I just say that we have the different opinion. We do not support this objection. So the EMA has given a positive opinion on setting of an MRL that conforms both the EC regulation and the Commission methodology. And in the absence of any data indicating the contrary, I consider the objection claims unproven. Uh, the MAA, MAA conclusions align with assessment by joint WHO and FAO meetings on pesticides as well as EFSA and the European Chemical Agency. Active substance and MRL approvals must be evidence-based and those passing the EU independent safety assessment should be given a fair market access. Contrary to the claim of the objectors, the threat to the environment is always assessed as a part of the application for a market authorization. This is just one element of the risk assessment, which also considers the safety for the users and the animal's health. Veterinary medicines for which the risk to the environment is considered higher than the benefits to protect the health of the animals concerned will always be denied authorization. MRL is a separate procedure to the application for a market authorization that must be performed for a company wishing to use the product in food producing animal. The principal concern in assessing an MRL is to set a level that is safe for consumers. As environment is safety and target animal Thank safety you. are part of the market approval, Thank you, uh, this objection is baseless. Thank you, and don't forget to smoke before you have your uh, neonic salmon lunch. Uh, so we move now to uh, the last uh, speaker, and as I come for the left. 
Well, thank you, Pascal. Uh, it is truly outrageous that a substance like imidacloprid uh, is allowed to be used in fish farming and allowed to end up on consumers' plates. Uh, we know for at least a decade that imidacloprid is extremely harmful. The damage this non-threshold uh, poison has already caused to bees, to birds, to entire ecosystems and to human health is unacceptable and should be stopped immediately. We wholeheartedly uh, support this objection. And I have two questions to the Commission. Does the Commission admit that it is inconsistent to, on the one hand, announce that the MRLs for bee-killing pesticides like imidacloprid uh, for imported products will be set to the limit of detection, and on the other hand, allow such high MRLs in fish for the same substance? And does the Commission agree that this example, again, shows the need to revise the MRL uh, regulation to also take into account the environmental effects in the setting of the MRLs. Thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to the Commission. Uh, Eva Zamora Escribano. Can you please press the speak button? Eva Zamora Escribano. Thank you. Yes, I'm not sure if you can hear me now. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Good morning to, to everyone and many thanks for the opportunity to uh, clarify uh, the questions that have been uh, raised. So I will start by saying that uh, the member states have delivered unanimously a positive opinion at the Standing Committee on Veterinary Medicinal Products. Here we are talking about veterinary medicinal products and not about uh, biocide. In relation to the public health uh, concerns, uh, the European Medicines Agency has thoroughly examined the possible risk that the residues of imidacloprid could pose to human health and concluded that the proposed MRL values could sufficiently save work public health. In relation to the publication of the um, opinions of the Committee for Veterinary Medicinal Products for, for Veterinary Use and the European Public MRL Assessment uh, Report, uh, they can be uh, available to, to the Parliament upon request, but uh, they are not uh, published until the Commission has uh, adopted the regulation on the MRL. And this is uh, due to the obligations in the legislation of uh, uh, confidentiality in relation to some uh, commercial um, information. If uh, this is published, uh, it could be used uh, by other applicants and other parties, even in the case that the Commission will not be adopting the proposed MRL. But I think that it is very important to highlight that the establishment of an MRL is a precondition for a company to apply for a marketing authorization for a veterinary medicine intended for food producing animal species. And the active substance, imidacloprid, cannot be used in food producing animals until a marketing authorization is granted for a veterinary medicine during the assessment of an application. Uh, the European Medicines Agency and the Commission examined the safety of the product for human health, animal health, but also the environment. So a marketing authorization may be granted only after the applicant has demonstrated to the European Medicines Agency a positive benefit-risk balance, including on environmental aspects. Risk of undesirable effects on the environment form part of the risk-benefit balance for all veterinary medicinal products. The environment risk assessment to be provided with the application for marketing authorizations indicate the potential exposure of the environment to the product and the level of associated risk among others in aquaculture. As an example, the framework in place has resulted in in a refusal to grant a marketing authorization under the centralized procedure to a product based on concerns for the long-term effects on that product on that fauna. In relation to the comments on the transparency uh, regulation, indeed the new transparency regulation does not cover foodstuffs of, of animal origin. However, the Commission and the European 
this in agency if you Escribano, we're going to refresh your connection please. fully committed to the transparency of the opinions on him okay. okay, as commission and uh, so, so sorry we can't the see you. mission so, believes that there is no inconsistent okay, we so uh, i'm very sorry but the last minute was not uh, uh workable so we we please could you try to reconnect i am now reconnected i guess yes go ahead it's fine thank you Thank you. I'm not sure uh, in which point uh, the connection was uh, the la lost. The last minute. The last minute. So, uh, in relation to the transparency regulation, um, indeed, it does not cover foodstuff of animal origin. However, the Commission and the European Medicines Agency are fully committed to transparency of the opinions on MRLs, and to this end, uh, we believe that there is no inconsistency with the new transparency. Uh, regulation. Transparency of the considerations leading to the establishment of MRLs are in place and as immediately after the agency's opinion are adopted, uh, everything is uh, public. So with this, I hope that uh, I could clarify some of the questions and many thanks again for the opportunity to, to speak. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so we uh can close this discussion uh, with the reminder that we vote uh, tomorrow uh, in the NV committee and if applicable uh, there will be a vote in the plenary uh, June uh, first session. Thank you very much and uh, we see uh, each other again at 1.45. Bye-bye.